If you're new to this channel, consider subscribe. Liking this video will get it shown more frequently on YouTube. You might even hit that notification bell so you're notified of new content here. And now that the Mevo supports NDI and ProPresenter has released their update to stream from their presentation software, let's look at what it takes to get the Mevo set up for ProPresenter 7. Let's start with the Mevo. If you've used yours with OBS, this will be a snap for you. Go into the settings and turn on NDI. Make sure you are on the same network as the computer running ProPresenter. Once this is done, move on to your computer. For the computer to recognize your Mevos, you'll need to have NDI Virtual Input installed. It comes in a suite of software and is a free tool made available by NewTek. You can download it by following the link in the description. Go, Go ahead and open the Virtual Input app on the computer. Verify that it sees the Mevos at the NDI icon in the system tray or header bar. Now that your computer sees the cameras, let's head into ProPresenter 7. Great thing about this software, if you have a media team and each needs to get familiar with the software, they can download a copy to practice on. It will have this message, but will be fully featured so they can get used to building a script or adding motions and countdowns. We can start by making sure our video inputs will have a place to be seen by the audience. Let's go to Screens and Configure Screens. Click the plus next to Audience and go to New Placeholder to choose the size. I'm choosing 720 because I know my upload speed will struggle with 1080 and Facebook has balked with trying to RTMP 1080 through ProPresenter. Let's rename this one Live. At the bottom of the screen, we have our Video Input section. Click on the plus and choose Video Input Configuration to add a camera input. This screen is also found under Preferences. I'm working on a Mac. Click on the plus next to video and choose which device you're going to use. Notice in your choices we will have the same options we see in the NDI icon here. Let's name this one Start 1. We'll do the same to add Start 2. Once I have the inputs ready, we can go back to the plus icon next to video input and choose to keep each of these in this tray. In order to know which camera view you are selecting, it helps to go back into video input setup and do a quick snapshot of its view.
before we go live, let's make sure of what we will and will not be showing to our online audience. Go back into Screens and choose Edit Looks in the Audience part of the menu. Notice in the Live column, everything is checked by default. For today's purpose, I'm going to only allow video input to be selected. When you are ready to do lyrics in lower thirds, you can recheck the slide option. The same goes for these others. Now let's get ready to go live. In either the screens menu or this little live button, we see capture settings. Our source options are the audience views we have set up. We want to choose live. Our destination options include disk to record or RTMP to stream. Resi is a new option that requires a separate subscription. The address for your RTMP stream can be found in the settings of your streaming destination. Now, I won't go into that for this video. You'll need both the address and the streaming key. Audio is one thing we haven't configured yet, so let's go back into the preferences and set something up. There are many options for audio, and if you're in a church setting, you'll likely want to run from your soundboard. For today's purpose, we'll choose the audio from one of the cameras. You can see it is a two-channel input and when I snapped my fingers you could see the meters jump. If we go ahead and start capture now, we'll get a stream connection failed warning. What we need to do is go to your destination and let it know to expect a live stream. I'll do that on Facebook. This is a private group I keep to test my streams. Click in the box where you would post and then on the more ellipsis and choose live video. Next, we want to tell it we will be using a stream key. Here you see where we copied the URL and stream key we saw in the Pro Presenter earlier. We know we are ready by the waiting for live video box in the lower right corner. Now we can go back into Pro Presenter and choose Start Live Capture. Your icon will be green this time, and the Facebook box will say connecting to live video. Switching inputs will show up on the Facebook monitor. Remember, there is usually about a 15 second delay. In this green button, we can see some valuable information. If you're streaming above what your upload speed can handle, you may see drop frames show up here. We'll run this up to a higher rate and see if it drops any. Any percentage below 10 will allow the button to stay green, knowing your stream is of good quality. Above 10 will show as brown, and then it'll turn red to show an unusable drop percentage. This is a pretty impressive tool we have in ProPresenter combined with Mevo. But I have a bonus for you. Maybe you have a Mevo Plus and know you can't use NDI to connect your camera to your computer. Well, there is another way to get your Mevo Plus into this setup. Mevo has a beta app called Mevo Wireless Webcam. It can be downloaded, again, through the link in the description. You'll notice this is only for the Mac. The Windows version is coming soon. They're going to get to update this compatible list, compatible with list 
to include ProPresenter 7. Running the wireless webcam app puts an icon in the header bar and so long as you are on the same network as your Mevos, they will automatically appear there. Choose the plus and we'll go back into ProPresenter to set it up as an input. The process is the same as the others. Choose the resolution to match the others. Now your Mevo Plus is another input for your ProPresenter live stream. This setup is a great solution for churches needing to have their live stream included in their current media setup.